Hi, my name's Abe and I'm going to show you how to draw f dashed of x from a graph of f of x. So essentially what we're doing is pretty simple. It's a graph of the gradient function from whatever function you have. So I'm just going to draw some f of x, alright? And um, it's going to look like this. So my f of x is going to look like that. There we go. That's f of x, okay? Some random shape. And I'm going to walk you through how to find the graph of the gradient function, or f dashed of x. So, three simple steps, three very simple steps. Have you doing this in no time? First thing, identify stationary points on f of x. Simple. Okay, so let's find the stationary points. Recall that stationary points are simply where the gradient of f of x is zero. So, you'll know that right here there is a minimum, right here there is a maximum, and right about here there's a stationary point of inflection so we have three stationary points on f of x right easy easy okay the first thing I'm going to do is link this line down so so I'm gonna draw f dashed of x right beneath f of x so we sort of trace this line down and we say because these points a stationary point, that means the gradient is zero, right? So since we're drawing the gradient function, you know that the gradient function will be zero at this point. It'll be zero at this point of inflection, and it will also be zero at this maximum. That makes sense, doesn't it? So basically, so basically, where the gradient is zero, f dash of x should equal zero. Okay, cool. So that's the first part. Pretty simple. Second point. Find the regions on f of x with positive or negative gradient. So, you want to cut up your f of x into different slots, different parts, and each part's going to either have positive gradient or negative gradient, right? So let's start from the very left. Firstly, this part. What does it have? The gradient there, you see that the line's pointing downwards if you go from left to right, so the gradient is negative. So you can say that this section here is negative. Moving across, this section here, if you go from left to right, you'll see that it goes up, right? This section is positive. Notice that you're, you're pretty much dividing the line according to the stationary points that we have. So this graph is going to have four sections. So this section is positive, so I'll mark that, positive. Now what about this third section? Positive again, isn't it? Because you have a point of inflection. So again, mark this line positive. And finally, oh, I meant to rub out that green thing, but that's okay. Finally, um, this last section here, this last section, the gradient is negative, right? Because it goes downwards from left to right. So, this last part is negative. Okay, easy. So, that's the second step out of the way. The last step is really putting all of our information together. So basically, draw line that fits the regions the positive or negative regions
and goes through our stationary points. So where f dashed of x equals zero. Yeah? So very simple. We know that for this very first section at the left, the gradient is negative, right? But notice that the gradient gets more and more shallow until it hits zero at this first point here. So I'm just going to maybe just label my points A, B, C, just to make life easy. So left of A, we see that the gradient is negative, right? But, but, it's increasing and hits zero at A. So we're going to do this. I'm just going to do this. Yeah? So we start out negative gradient. The gradient's negative, right? Because the, 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 the line is below the, the, below the x-axis. And then, we see that from this second section between A and B, the gradient is positive. But it's only going to be positive until B. Because at B, it has to be zero again. So we sort of come back down, like so. And then at B, it goes positive again, right? So we can sort of do that again. And you need to keep in mind that at C, again, our gradient hits zero. So let's bring our curve down. And then what happens? Look what happens at C. It crosses the line. It goes into negative, right? But what happens, say, you know, about here? And around there, you see that the gradient is still negative, but not very negative. In fact, it almost goes flat. So what you want to demonstrate is that you really know your stuff. And so you see that the gradient, initially, as it passes C, it goes negative, quite negative. But then it sort of like turns back on itself and gets less negative and then sort of approaches zero, doesn't it? as our curve, as, as it sort of plays out. So it kind of does this. It does something like this. So at sort of like this area here, the gradient, the curve is almost flat. The gradient is almost zero. And we represent that down here, where the gradient is still negative, but very close to zero. Cool. And so that's it. That's drawing the gradient function from the original function. Three easy steps. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. I'll see you next time.